Hello everybody. The Warriors second string pull out the improbable road upset over the Cavaliers. The Warriors were clinging to an eight point lead with just three minutes left. This rebound goes straight to Jordan Poole. You can see the contrast in Ty Jerome and Jordan Poole's approaches. Ty Jerome immediately puts out his hand. You keep the ball, slow it down. And as Jerome is doing that, Poole is winding up to chuck this touchdown pass. And unfortunately, this bomb doesn't really go to anybody. And Kaminga, who had a great return game, makes an incredible play to hunt this ball down. As he's flying out of bounds, he redirects this with one motion right to Dante DiVincenzo. Incredible play. So now we have Kaminga in the stands, DiVincenzo ending up in the stands, Darius Garland is in the stands, so this is a four on three for the Cavaliers. So I'm not sure that was the wrong decision in a vacuum, but when it's late in the game and you're up eight, maybe you don't want to go for the risky two. Poole's handle has been shaky down the stretch also. Here he was lucky that the ball was called out on the Cavaliers. The Warriors are setting up a baseline out of bounds play. They usually keep someone in the far corner just in case the defender gets distracted. Poole makes a really good read here. He identifies Dante's defender, and then the second Dante's defender turns his head to look, Poole sees it right away. He can't wait for the referee to hand him the ball, and he's already going to turn his body in anticipation of throwing it to Dante. The defender still has his head turned, and so this is a beautiful whip pass to Dante. The defender turned around. Dante's going to get off an open corner three. Kaminga is really blossoming as a defensive stopper. He's got his feet skewed to the side here, which is going to invite Garland to attack the top foot and go around Kaminga. But Kaminga is so fast that he just swivels and stays on Garland's hip. Garland tries to bounce off Kaminga to make space. Really high difficulty bank shot. Kaminga's got his arm out and it's even possible he gets his hand on the ball because the ball does not come anywhere close to the basket. Pretty intimidating, effective one-on-one -on -one defense there by Kaminga. DiVincenzo throws it to Ty Jerome. In contrast to Poole, who last time attacked with the dribble and then ended up a 50-50 ball that went out of bounds. Ball comes to him with 19 on the shot clock and he aggressively stands there and just puts the ball under his arm and just hangs out and Ty just wants to burn as much clock as possible. Jerome is not the kind of person who can blow by a defender without a screen so he picks up his dribble and unloads this to Kaminga. This is the play after a free throw so the Warriors have specifically called this play and this is Horn's follow. Ty Jerome is going to pop out. There he got a little pin down from Looney and then Looney's going to follow to go set a screen and Jordan is going to clear out. Kerr is specifically saying I want Ty Jerome handling this and not Jordan Poole just because when you're ahead late in the game you don't need high risk high reward. You want someone boring and steady who's not going to turn the ball over. Looney sets a flat screen. Ty Jerome goes down the sideline. Of all things, Cleveland is sending two against Ty Jerome because they know Looney is not really a threat out here. Jerome chucks it over to Looney and tries to take the dribble handoff. Garland is going under the screen. Ty Jerome is shooting 38% on the year, but Garland doesn't seem to believe that number is real. Jerome takes the screen again using Kevon Looney's butt to screen. Not a lot of time left. This is as open as I'm going to get. And he just buries the super clutch three. And again, you have the difference in styles. Dante is leading the break, but then ends up making the safe choice and taking the ball out. Poole, going for the home run, is continuing to go all the way to the basket. He's actually completely open. I think Poole might be right in this situation. Now he's really, really, really open, but Dante's just saying, forget it, we're gonna run clock. After he comes out, he's open on the sideline for an open three. Dante has a choice of whether to give it to High Risk Jordan or Steady Ty Jerome, and Kevon Looney, the elder statesman, is pointing to Ty Jerome. And let's see what high energy move Ty Jerome makes off the catch. Oh, it's his patented 
I'm going to put the ball under my elbow and pretend I just showed up to the playground. The Cavaliers send two men to double Ty Jerome to get it out of his hands. Looney with a little shovel pass. It's almost like Ty Jerome looks up and sees that there's nine and he thinks, oh, I can't shoot that early. And then in mid shot, he sort of vomit this ball towards Looney. The entire Cleveland defense is expecting the ball to go to pool. Two men run at pool in anticipation. Looney somehow notices Anthony Lamb is cutting unguarded bullet pass. This is a very aware rotation from Jared Allen, who just intimidates the shot out of Anthony Lamb. He does find a completely open Dante DiVincenzo on the arc here. This shot is faded to miss. Now credit to Jordan Poole over here. He could be pouting over not getting the ball on the last couple plays, but instead he hustles. And as the shot goes up, he tries to get inside position on this rebounder. And that causes Stevens to stick his arm out and shove Poole out of the way. And so instead of Cleveland getting the ball, Poole manufactures another possession for the Warriors. Here's the nice sideline out of bounds play. This is a stagger screen for Jordan Poole. And as Poole runs towards the second screen, it freezes Mobley for a second. And Kevon Looney times this cut perfectly right down the lane. Ty Jerome, even though he's got a face full of Jared Allen, he reads this nicely and throws a perfect pass to Looney. Doesn't have to dribble. And at the end of this play, after this beautiful one-hand pass right on the numbers, I like Poole. First thing he does, does he run over and start hyping up Looney for the great dunk? No, he immediately points to Ty Jerome for making the good read and the pass. In the final contrast, Poole, 17 seconds left on the clock. He's got the ball. He's got it over half court. Right now, he could choose to just take the ball to the corner here and wait for someone to foul him. But instead, he goes for the high-risk play and tries to blow by and get the layup. Instead, he gets punched a few times along the way and then amazingly gets the offensive foul called on him. I wouldn't say that Poole makes all bad decisions in crunch time. It's just that it's volatile, high risk stuff that he does. And so you get some inspired play and inspired decisions. And then you get the decisions that make you want to tear your hair out. Okay, time for a quick celebration audit. We get this very unfortunate sequence of events. You see Steph reaching out to give a high five to Anthony Lamb, making eye contact with Anthony Lamb. But tragically, Jordan Poole thinks that Steph wants to dap him up. Jordan, is this really likely after you just spent a minute carrying Steph around like a teddy bear backpack? I think you've got to share the Steph love. But no, Jordan thinks he's got to go in for the low five. Steph had his hand here and he pulls it up to get momentum for a proper low five with Anthony Lamb. And Poole aims for where his hand was, and he completely fans on the high five. That is brutal. And then in the case of instant karma, Steph reaching out to high five. Jermichael Green pulls back for the high five and is completely left hanging as Jordan Poole intercepts Jermichael Green. Yes, revenge is a dish best served cold.